This is where I'll be doing the testing with the Glock 17 and 9mm and the 22 caliber carbine rifle, Smith & Wesson MP1522. Uh, just to give you a frame of reference in your uh, left uh, foreground there is a blue barrel. And I'll be starting approximately there, shooting at the berm in the background there, walking towards these two tables over here. Uh, much like this. Just walking over here to the tables and stopping between the tables and getting myself uh, within a couple of feet of the timer that you can see there on the table. So that'll give you some reference as to how far I started shooting because we'll get a different sound level with a 9 and a 22 caliber starting some feet away and the closer we get to the timer. Obviously the louder it sounds and we'll see what kind of reaction we get from the timer at different sensitivity levels. Uh, starting with level 1 then we'll switch to level 10 and we'll find out what works in between if that's the best. And also uh, we'll be close to the timer when I give myself a if you're finished unload and show clear because we want to see if the timer is going to have any reaction to the noise of the slide and so forth and create some false shot times. So uh, we're not worried about our splits or what our score is on the targets. We're just testing the timer. So uh, let's get on with the testing. Make ready. Are you ready? Stand by. If you're finished, unload, show clear. Well, doesn't seem to be any reaction at the lowest sensitivity level. We'll stop. Make ready. Are you ready? Stand by. Well, we seem to have gotten some shot times, and I've got slide lock, so I think we'll stop right here. But let's see what happens when I get a, if you're finished, unload and show clear. Slide out, hammer, or excuse me, slide back. And I'm pulling the slide to the rear several times. I'm about two to three feet from the timer, so it is reacting at the sensitivity level of 10 to the slide and giving me additional shot times, which would be wrong. Make ready. Are you ready? Stand by. Right now I'm about uh, three feet away from the timer. The owner's manual says that five to six feet is uh, optimum or maximum distance. I'll get right about here. Last shot. If you're finished, unload, show clear. Clearing the actions. Magazine out. Slide back to the rear. Releasing the slide. Hammer. Holster. No reaction from the timer, just a foot or two away. Uh, maximum of two feet, maybe somewhere one to two feet from the timer. So a uh, much better setting than one when I wasn't getting any reaction. And ten, it was too sensitive and picking up the noise from the slide and clearing the gun. Make ready. Are
Are you ready? Stand by. Okay, at level one sensitivity with the 22 caliber rifle, I'm about less than two feet away from the timer and there's no reaction as far as shot time. So, if you're finished, unload, show clear. Make ready. Are you ready? Stand by. Looks like we're recording shot times, okay. Uh, fired several. I'm about uh, less than two feet from the timer right now, so we've got some shot times. If you're finished, unload, show clear. Let's see what happens when I clear the gun. Magazine out. Bolt back. Yes, it does react at sensitive level 10 when I pulled the bolt back here on my AR-15 platform. Let's see what happens when I release it. Yep, adds an additional shot time at sensitive Okay, make ready. Are you ready? Stand by. Very good, I'm recording shot times, uh, 1614, 16, 14 right now. Started out about 10, 20 feet from the timer and progressively walked closer. I'm now about within two feet of the timer. Let's crank off another couple of rounds. Very good, so it's recording the shot times. Let's see what happens when I, if you're finished, unload and show clear. Magazine out, bolt back, no reaction, releasing the bolt now, still no reaction from the shot timer, very good. So within less than two feet with a 22 caliber carbine here, pulling the charging handle back, removing the magazine, didn't cause any additional shot times with a setting of level eight. So that seems to be working a little better. Uh, if you haven't figured out, by the way, we do have planes uh, flying overhead to Love Field and DFW, and we're outdoors, and it's getting close to 100 degrees. So I think we've got some pretty good testing information. Thanks for watching. Let's wrap up the discussion about the timer. So what do we learn outside there during our testing? Well, I'm going to do testing like that again when it's a lot cooler my gosh it must have been 100 degrees plus there in the shade whatever anyway so you saw with two different calibers two different types of firearms uh sensitivity level does make a difference uh just sort of like a little red hiding hood and the and the three bears you know too hot too cold just right so Check out your firearms in your particular setting, especially if you're indoors. I wouldn't be surprised if you get a different kind of reading there. Uh, in our case, it looked like uh, maybe a 9mm worked uh, good at a 5. And in the case of the 22 carbine, an 8 would be good. I don't know what would happen with the 22 pistol. And in all cases, uh, yes, I know that uh, if you turn the timer so that the microphone is not facing the shooter you know if the range officer takes it and sticks it out uh, behind their back or covers it with their uh, thumb or 
hand or puts it up against their body in some fashion, uh, you're going to minimize the sound coming from the gun when you're having it uh, cleared and so forth and not getting any false shot time. So uh, put that into consideration, but also think, what do you do? Uh, you're going to have a reshoot when the range officer forgets to cover the microphone or move the timer out of the way so that it doesn't pick any false shot times up and it does pick up false shot time up and so the shooter is a disadvantage because of the range officer allowing the timer to be too close or the sensitivity level was too high for that particular situation. So consider all that in your club decision on getting the timer.